Okay, this is Andy Graham of the Ask Andy Show. I'm in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. There's Maria and Pepito's grocery store down the street. It's rainy. I, I was going to sit in the park, but all the chairs are wet, and I'm cold today. It's really hardly ever gets above about 75 degrees here, and in the morning you can get down to probably 60, 55, but put on a sweatshirt today. Okay. I'm an international traveler. I've been to 90 countries and traveled nonstop for 16 plus years. Okay, question. Insurance. Uh, Bob D. or Bob, Bob the Squid from Ann Arbor, Michigan, USA asks, Hey Andy, what are your thoughts about travel insurance? For example, insurance to pay for evacuation in the event of a medical emergency or to return your body home if you are killed. Um, I suppose a lot of this has to do with uh, how much family you got, right? Uh, if you got a lot of family, then you probably better make sure you get your body home if you died. Um, I was, I, I, I'm going to show you a second video. If you follow up after this video, there's a video where I went to the hospital and it talks uh, about the uh, insurance. It talks about the local hospital here in Vilcabamba. But, uh, you know, medical evacuation insurance is probably, for me, I would think pretty worthless because I change countries too much. And uh, there's all this fine print in insurance, and it'll say something like, if you're in a country that the United States recommends that you don't go to, or like right now there's probably a recommendation not to go to Thailand because they had a like a martial law type thing going on in Thailand. And so the fine print of a lot of these insurances says that they don't cover you in the event that the USA government or some government recommends that you don't go there. So travel warnings issued by the US government will actually invalidate uh, a lot of travel insurances. Uh, I, I do think sometimes that uh, if you're really up in the air whether you're going to go on, a, on an airplane trip, you might get the uh, cover that thing that says pay an extra thirty dollars and say like my father was I was worried that my mother my father was going to get very bad so I checked the because he was he, he actually died of cancer but before he died I checked the thing that said you know maybe I'll have to cancel his ticket right so just you know it's, it's an insurance from insurances for loss but generally ninety nine percent of the time I don't buy any kind of insurance because I think I'd rather try to be self-insured uh, but if you was actually going to go live in a place and uh, you wanted to make sure that you in the event that something was gone I'm saying you're going to go live in a place for a long time uh, you might want to get the medical evacuation insurance now what does medical evacuation insurance tell you that tells you you don't trust the country at all <laughs> okay you don't trust the insurance you don't trust the you don't trust the insurance if they had insurance in that country you don't trust the medical of the country and you don't trust anything about the country and so for me I probably would say that I don't want it um, I'm not sure that you know what what I what hi how are you um, that's that's to say that I'm not willing to go to any of the uh, doctors in the country for most things. Now, you know, it's also under the idea that I have insurance inside the United States that's going to take care of me if I go home. So truthfully, I don't have the insurance inside the United States, so there's no reason I would buy medical evacuation insurance because I it would be basically a waste of energy. Now, when I get on Medicare or Medicaid in the United States at the age, I don't know, 65 or something, I'll probably get on Medicaid, I expect. I I probably would <laughs> I would probably try to hope that I could slip into the USA before they realized that I was actually out of the United States and basically not tell them that I was traveling and basically still do it because it's something I paid for and just because I'm outside the United States doesn't mean I shouldn't collect. It. But don't don't get me wrong. I am I got birds and motorcycles and cars. Um, it's pretty early. It's about seven o'clock. So. Uh, uh, maybe 7.30. Nothing happens really around here until about 8 o'clock. Then it gets pretty busy. But uh, I'm not an expert on Medicaid and I'm not an expert on Medicare. I don't know anything about them. I'm not on Medicaid or Medicare and I'm, I don't have insurance inside the United States. 
and what I am more or less is self self insured. What I would like to buy would be insurance in the event that I have like something like a very serious heart attack or cancer. I would like to buy insurance only for those two things because I know that strangely like the hospital down here is free and I, I, I guess they'll probably take out a if I had an appendicitis or they had, I don't know, some kind of ulcer or something like that or something, a hernia or something, they'll do the, they'll, they'll actually, I'm actually in Guatemala, I mean, in, I'm in uh, Ecuador and it sounds like the insurance is free and gratis and they'll take, they'll do the surgery for free, <laughs> okay, so um, what I'm looking for is that m more things that are very long term that would take a, a major thing like a heart attack or something. But the only way I know to, I, I'm studying this right now to write this guidebook, and the only way I found to discover which, which ones would possibly be good would be to go to, uh, well, Frommers has got a list of like eight countries that have eight, uh, Frommers.com has a list of eight companies that supply travel insurance. And then, uh, you know, you can search for a thing, but what you want to do is a top ten list. You want to search for list of, you know, evacu medical evacuation insurance, and then you want to do it for your own country. Like in England, it's different than really in America or Canada. And then you want to make sure that you sort of figure out whether they're going to cover it. But then what I was doing, too, is I was trying to find if there's any medical evacuation insurance. No problema raising the door and making a lot of noise over here. She's being pretty polite. Um, and then, um, so I was looking for a company that actually shown on the internet that somebody had been used their service. Now I asked in the hospital yesterday about medical evacuation and they said they really acted like they never had anybody get medically evacuated that way. But they actually will, if I was going to get medically evacuated from here, they would have to take me by ambulance to Loja and then get on the Loja air, uh, air there's an airport there and so but what's nice is the ambulance from here in Vilcabamba to uh, Loja is free <laughs> okay so you, a lot of times you don't know it but a lot of the public uh, medical services overseas are free I had free service one time in Dominican Republic I went to Thailand did the medical stuff in Thailand and it was like a dollar Okay, at the at the hospital that was connected to the university there, uh, and so be real careful when you're reviewing the thing. A lot of times, the the pri the public stuff in most countries is free and almost thing, and so you really all the cost of insurance is sort of negated when you really realize that most 90, 99 percent of things are just pretty common, but. Um, I'm kind of thinking that if you're really worried about this medical evacuation insurance, you you hopefully are either rich or you, you better stay home, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I think it's only like, I don't think it's that much, okay? But uh, it also presumes that you have insurance in the United States that's going to take care of you, right? So you got to have those two things. And this is really sort of more for a vacation person maybe than a person living abroad. I think if you're going to live abroad, you got to you got to say I'm living abroad and I I trust the locals country, the country I'm in's medical services. And if you don't trust the country the country you're in's medical services, you should go home. And guess what? 99 I, I would say, let's see. Let's say 95% of all people that go live abroad actually return to the USA to die. So it, it's very, very few people that actually stay in the country unless they're moving to Europe or something or one of the first world countries. They actually stay there and die there because they, they basically, at the end of the days when they get really nervous, they don't trust anything but their own country. And I, I suspect that all these Vilcabamba people that are really anti-USA are not letting go of their passport or their medical insurance or all their things or their social security. They basically want to have the best of both worlds. So it's kind of a thing. But I hope I outlined all the different variances of medical uh, uh, medical evacuation uh, thing where somebody would fly you out of the country. Thanks, Bob. It's a good question, but it's it's a very complicated question. And I'm not worried about my health, so, you know, I don't think about it as much, right? We can